Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Gray of The Empowered Daughter and today I'm going to talk a little bit about energy work, about when to do energy work, when to use it, how it can be used and what its limitations are. Because uh, I do energy work as part of my healing practice, I work with women who are healing from having a mother wound, you know, a mom who was difficult or maybe she was ill and there's some complexity to the relationship, there's wounding, and I help women to kind of navigate that, to go from someone being in survival mode to someone in thriving mode, because that's ultimately what we all want. We all want to thrive. Um, so that's what I do. And in the, in the course of my practice and working with people, there are times that I'll do energy work on them. So I wanted to clarify when to do energy work and when not to, because I sometimes get approached by women who don't really want to go into their wounding per se, but they do want to receive energy work. And the truth is that energy work, if, if we're not actively working on ourselves, energy work is, is really just a temporary kind of fix. It's not long lasting. So a lot of a lot of us are kind of looking for a mystical or magical or multi-dimensional approach to our healing where we're looking to maybe get some energy work or or, or do some other things where um, we can improve our lives without having to kind of dive into our psychology. But the truth is it doesn't it kind of doesn't work that way, okay? Our psychology is actually what sets up our energy body. So we can't really approach the energy that's not going to change the psychology. The psychology has to change and then the energy body changes. So um, so there's no way of not going into our feelings, our shame, um, our beliefs about ourselves. Um, there's no way to kind of avoid going through that. So, But energy work can help. And I think... It's wonderful to do. I think it's powerful. And it's particularly potent when it's part of a holistic approach to healing or, uh, you know, a holistic approach to wanting to be a thriving person. Energy work definitely has a place in that, but, um, but it can't be at the absence of doing our psychological work either. So let's talk, talk I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this. What do I mean exactly? So what is energy work? What can it do? Energy work is when um, me as the practitioner, I perceive and tune, refine energy, and then I drive it in a particular way toward a person, right? To either toward myself or toward the client that I'm working with. It's gentle. Um, and some people perceive it and some people don't, which is fine. It doesn't mean it's not working. Um, and so what I can do, um, what energy workers do is they can cleanse and clear the energy body. So we have an energy body that's on top of our physical body and we can accumulate dense energy that kind of sticks to us. So, you know, a really dark person is just covered in dark, dense energy, um, you know, and we all accumulate dark energy or dense, I don't mean dark, but, you know, dense energy. We all accumulate dense energy. So I'm, I all, always do um, energy work on myself. I call it like my hygiene, my energetic hygiene to clear and cleanse, release, um, so that I can release projections of other people, judgments of myself, um, judgments of others, judgments I've received of others, and I can just kind of and start afresh, set myself anew. Um, so it's a really uplifting experience and um, kind of has us feeling refreshed, which is lovely. It can also be used to alleviate some physical ailments, alleviate some symptoms, in some cases, people do receive healing, but I don't want to make any promises or any representations of that um, because I'm not really in control of whether someone heals. All I do is send the energy and there are, you know, mystical forces at work um, with that. And I, I have no control over whether someone's healed, but there are, you know, beings that we've known who have fully healed people like Jesus. That's what he was doing, was some form of, you know, driving energy. 
beautiful um, cosmic healing energy and and repairing the the body that way pretty amazing stuff um, but for me uh, people feel alleviated symptoms and and which is lovely they get a little bit of relief so energy work can be really lovely as part of a self-care practice like I do for myself um, and just to help us cope with the craziness of this world it can give us a tool in our toolbox just to um, help us navigate the complexity of the human life and human experience, particularly at this point in time when we have a lot of upheaval and a lot of um, unpredictability and social unrest. Just looking at my notes, I'm like, what else do I want to say about it? Um, yeah, and so it, energy work is temporary. Um, it lasts for an hour uh, or maybe um, a week, or if it's particularly potent a month, you know, unless you're Jesus, <laughs> then it will last a lifetime for people. Um, but it's temporary. It's a temporary fix. It's something that we do over and over again, if we're not doing any other healing work, okay? If we're doing other healing work, it has a more permanent effect. But if we're not doing any other healing work, it has a temporary effect, okay? Um, so, so if we want to actually shift our lives and heal from our wounds or from trauma, we, um, we can't avoid the psychological approach. We need to do a psychological approach. What do I mean by that? We need self-awareness. We need to understand. Um, so we need to understand our beliefs about ourselves uh, we need, and the world. And my place in the world. So we have to, because this is what forms our lives, is, is our psychological outlook, okay? So we need to understand our beliefs because our beliefs form our emotions. Our emotions form our thoughts. And our thoughts form our behaviors and actions and how we show up in the world, okay? So if we want to make shifts in our lives, if we want to heal, if we want to address some wounding or insecurities or overcompensations or you know whether we're collapsing or we're taking we're being too big and taking up too much space because we're compensating for our for our, our um ourselves then we want to uh, approach our psychological patterns and these are patterns that are set when we're children because that's the um our brains are developing um our our understanding of ourselves in the world, our social structures, we're being introduced to everything in childhood. And that's what sets up this psychological pattern. And so in order to make adjustments in our lives, we need self-awareness over what the patterns are, what are the motivations in that pattern, um, what are my beliefs about myself in the world, what's possible for me, what's not possible for me, what I have to tolerate, you know, can I have a fulfilling life or am I meant to just you know, struggle and suffer or feel like, um, you know, life is, I've heard people refer to it as, you know, feeling like they're on a hamster wheel and there's no time to catch their breath or feeling it's like they're in Groundhog Day where every day is just the same and it's very mundane and it's boring and they're living without passion and purpose and aliveness. The only way to kind of connect in with those things is to really do dive into our shadow, dive into our psychology it doesn't have to be with a therapist, although it can be with a therapist. There's other ways to get to um, gain the self-awareness needed. And then energy work can be used along with this shadow work and initiate, initiatory experience into our psychology and understanding who we are in a really deep fundamental level. Energy work can be used to, to cleanse and clear what comes up, to provide upliftment, to create some homeostasis, and um, to connect us in with peace so that we're, we're kind of diving in and, and bringing up, you know, our shame and our fears and, and understanding ourselves in a better way. And then the energy work can be used to help clear and cleanse and, and comfort us. So they work really well together, but I just wanted to clarify that energy work all on its own is, it can be really helpful if we want to use it for coping, 
but it's not the modality that's actually going to shift your life. Okay. All right. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Comment below. Um, and I thought I would lead you through a little uh, energy work, energy clearing exercise, something, a tool that you can use anytime. If you're a particularly sensitive person, like I am, um, then I suggest doing spiritual hygiene, energetic hygiene multiple times a day, okay, so that we can just feel really grounded and um, and feel good <laughs> so that things don't accumulate so much for us. Our sensitivity, you know, we get pulled into the craziness of the world and um, what's happening in the news and um, anyways, upheaval at work or whatever. This, we're in a time of great instability and unpredictability. So this is a tool that you can use to help provide you with some more stability and to just get you centered again, okay? Alrighty, so just if you want to do it with me, um, just being comfy wherever you are, making sure that the body is comfy. You could be sitting up straight, you don't have to be. And just inviting you to close your eyes. Let me close our eyes so that we can block out all the senses, you know, because our eyes are taking in so much stimulation and information. So closing the eyes allows us to interiorize and focus on our inner world, our inner experience, and to help us perceive the energy better. Okay. So just taking in a deep breath and letting it out. <sighs> okay, so I want you to imagine above the crown of your head that there's an opening, an opening to the cosmos. And this beautiful cosmic energy starts to flow down from this opening. This light living energy. The energy of the divine. What the Pacos in the Andes call Sama. So just imagining that this light living energy Coming down, streaming down. You're feeling it on the crown of the head. And you're feeling it running down the body. And as it does, you're just noticing that if you feel any denseness of energy, that this light living energy will lighten it, lighten this energy so it becomes part of the light energy. And if it's particularly dense, it runs down the body all the way down into Mother Earth. And she is grateful to take it. She's happy to take that energy because she will transmit it. So again, just feeling the stream of energy coming down, running over the body. So feeling it running over the front of the body, the back of the body. Running down and imagining that any dense energy that it makes contact with is either transmuted into the light living energy or runs down the body and is received by Mother Earth for her to transmit. And I'm going to be quiet for a few moments now so you can just tune into your perception of this energy. Even if you cannot perceive the energy, if you can't feel it, just knowing that where our attention goes, the energy will flow. Just taking a few more moments. Okay, and now just feeling the stream of energy from above the crown, just Closing up, shutting down. And just feeling your body, feeling your energy body. Any 
noticing how you feel. Now softening your focus on the energy body and returning back into the room, opening your eyes. Thank you. So this is something you can do multiple times a day if you find that it serves you. All right, I hope you found that helpful. If you have questions or comments, feel free to reach out or comment below and have an amazing day.